Hello and welcome. This time we are doing another ISLM model diagram type question for intermediate macro. Um, in this question, we're dealing with um, ISNLM, but we're not dealing with the equations. We're just going to deal with the, um, the diagram portion, uh, and I'm going to kind of skip over the intuition. Um, and we're going to focus on when monetary policy and fiscal policy change at the same time. So before this, we've dealt with uh, shifts in the IS curve, shifts in the LM curve, and the effect of that on um, the rest of the model, the ISLM model. Um, and we usually have that, you know, when something shifts, like say the government spends more money or they cut taxes, or suppose the central bank changes something with the uh, monetary with the money supply, we've kind of had this ceteris pair of assumption, all else equal assumption. So there's that one change and everything else is equal. With this question, we're going to consider what happens when monetary policy and fiscal policy change at the same time. So getting started, what's the first question here? Question asks, uh, suppose that the government wants to raise investment, by, but keep output constant. In the ISLM model, what mix of monetary and fiscal policy will achieve this goal? So first off, let's think about um, raising investment. So in our model so far, investment's been a function of the interest rate. So negative is invert investment is negatively linked to the um, interest rate. That is to say, when the interest rate is super, super high, the cost of borrowing is high, and so we expect investment to be rather low. Firms to borrow not as much money than when compared to when the interest rate is uh, very, very low, implying that the cost of borrowing um, is very low, and so we'd expect firms to invest, borrow quite a bit, and so investment going up. So investment tends to be negatively linked to the real exchange rate. Sorry, negatively linked to the interest rate. So if we wanted to increase investment, what we need to do is somehow decrease the interest rate. Um, we could do that. We could decrease the interest rate using our LM curve. Uh, if the central bank um, increases the money supply, that's going to shift out the LM curve, which is going to drive down um, the interest rate, which is going to increase in, uh, investment. So the first step, how do we raise investment? Um, well, what we could do is get the central bank to expand the money supply. That's going to decrease the interest rate, and that's going to increase investment. However, when we do this, when we shift the LM curve out like this and reduce the interest rate, what we also find is that output increases, right? Um, so, but in this policy mix, the goal is to keep output constant. So what other policy mix can we include in addition to this monetary expansion to uh, ensure that interest rates stay down, therefore investment up, but keep output constant? Well, what we could do is the following. In addition to the shift out of curve, we could shift in the IS curve. Uh, there's two ways we could have a shift inward of that IS curve. We could either decrease government spending or we could increase taxes. Either one, the IS curve is going to shift inward or to the left. Um, and then given the increase in the money supply, given M is going up, the, that LM curve is going to shift out or to the right. So together, what's going to happen is when we start off at this equilibrium, you know, IS curve sub 1, LM curve sub 1 has an intersection here with um, this interest rate and this output. If we increase the money supply and shift out the LM curve and decrease um, the IS curve, shift it inward um, using one of these policy mixes, um, if we shift those curves in such a way, we, we can get them to uh, reach this new equilibrium with the real interest rate at uh, R star 2 and keeping output constant. Um, how much exactly should we increase the money supply? Uh, and how much exactly should we either decrease in government spending or increase in taxes or some combination of the two? Um, that's going to depend on the economy you're actually dealing with. But there's theoretically possible that these two could be shifted in such a way that um, the interest rate goes down and therefore investment increases and we keep output constant. And how do you do that? Well, it's going to be some combination of an expansionary monetary policy and a contractionary fiscal policy. So that's that. Part B asks the following. In the early 1980s, the U.S. government cut taxes and ran a, a budget deficit while the Fed pursued a tight monetary policy. What effect should this policy mix have? 
So first off, the government cut taxes and increased government spending. So what implication does that have? Um, well, we found uh, previously when we dealt with the IS curve, um, a decrease in taxes or an increase in government spending and or some combination of the two is going to shift the IS curve outward. And I'll show you how to draw that in a second. Um, and then the second part of this, the monetary policy side, um, the Fed pursued a tight monetary policy. Usually when we imply tight monetary policy, we're saying that um, the money supply is either decreasing or the money supply is growing at a slower rate than it is otherwise. So what happens when we decrease the um, money supply? Well, we have um, a shift leftward or a shift inward of the LM curve. So if we were to combine those two policy mixes together in the ISLM diagram framework, we get the following. So we're starting off at this equilibrium right here with R star sub 1 and Y star sub 1. So we start off at some policy mix over here with our ISM and LM curves intersecting at this point. Um, the shift outward in the IS curve from IS sub 1 to IS sub 2 is re reflecting the either the decrease in taxes and expansion in government spending. Um, and then the second part here is the shift inward of the LM curve from LM sub 1 to LM sub 2. So what happens is um, the real interest rate is definitely going to go up, but uh, depending on the size of these shifts, we're not really sure what's going to happen to um, output. In fact, I wrote Y star is unchanged, but Y star is uncertain. So given that the IS curve shifts out and the LM curve shifts inward, we definitely know that the real interest rate is going to go up, uh, and in fact, at that time in the 1980s, the real the interest rate definitely went up. In fact, on an aside story, my grandma or my great grandma bought a CD back in the 80s, and she was getting like 15% interest. It was insane. She had it for like 20 years or something. Anyway, they had a very high interest rate, around between 10 and 15% in that part of the 80s. Um, but what was the effect of those two policy mixes, the expansionary fiscal policy and contractionary monetary policy? Well, within the ISLM um, model framework, the effect on output is uncertain because it depends on the size of these shifts. If the um, this shift in the LM curve is significantly bigger than the shift in the IS curve, we expect output to be in this range down here, so we expect output to be a bit lower. However, if the shift in the IS curve outward, you know, that decrease in taxes, increase in government spending, um, if that effect is significantly bigger than the monetary effect, then we expect output to be a bit higher than it was before. Um, however, what actually happens, the ISML framework doesn't quite tell us. So that's that. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.